Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. This is chapter 16 of my complete video guide to becoming an amateur astronomer, chapter 16, part two, entry level astrophotography. In chapter 16, part one, I talked about getting into the hobby of astrophotography using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, the equipment you would need, the settings you would need to use with that type of camera, and I suggested at the end that you go out and practice those settings by taking what I call skyscapes. Skyscapes are pictures that include both the ground and the sky, something like the moon rising over a skyline, a moonrise or a moonset, crescent moon with a planet, an aurora, a conjunction, things like that. And then I said in part two, we would process those skyscape photos in Photoshop. So that's what we're going to do in this part two, but if you'd like to go back and look at part one, here's the link, or you can start here if you want to. And after we process the skyscape photos in Photoshop, then we're going to go out into the field and we're going to talk about what additional equipment you need to start taking deep sky photos. And we're going to set that equipment up and we're going to go over how to take deep sky photos. I think that's going to take a while, so I think there'll be a part three. And in part three, we'll go over processing our deep sky photos in Photoshop. I know that there are other applications you can use to process photos. GIMP is a free uh, photo editing software, and there's Affinity Photo and probably others, but I'm not going to talk about that. I think that Photoshop is the absolute best photo editing software made, and that's what I'm going to be talking about and using. I know it's $9.99 a month, but you can get a free 30-day trial and try it out. And if you don't like it, you can cancel it. And if you don't like this video, you can go watch one I'm using it. Because I'm only going to be using Photoshop. Now let's talk about DSLR and mirrorless cameras. DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex. And what it means is that in front of the sensor, there's a mirror. And the mirror sends the image to the viewfinder so that if you want to look through the viewfinder, you can. The trend is to mirrorless cameras though. Mirrorless cameras don't have a mirror in front of the sensor. This camera is mirrorless and it, you see that it just has the sensor. And you can still look through the viewfinder on a mirrorless camera. It's just an electronic image. So it's exactly what you see on the LCD screen. But you're not going to be using the viewfinder for astrophotography anyway. So there's no need to have it, but it's okay if you have a DSLR camera, you just have a mirror that you're not going to be using for astrophotography. But the beautiful thing about DSLR and mirrorless cameras is that in addition to using them for astrophotography, you can use them in the daytime, unlike dedicated astrophotography cameras. But my problem with DSLR and mirrorless cameras is that it's a mouthful and I cannot continue to say it. So I would like to refer to both of those types of cameras hereafter as digital cameras. So from now on, when I say digital camera, I'm referring to mirrorless cameras and DSLR cameras, not, not uh, pocket cameras, uh, point and shoot. Okay, so let's get started. Get out your digital camera and let's take out the SD card. I didn't talk about this in part one, but you need a decent sized SD card because for time lapses and for star trails, you might take hundreds of pictures. So you want a decent size. This one's 64 gigabytes, probably 32 gigabytes is plenty. I've, I've never filled this 64 gigabyte one up yet, but you should have two because they do fail. So you want to back up. So take it out. And now we're going to put the SD card into the computer and open up Photoshop and process the skyscape photos that you took. I use a PC and so I'll be using the word control on a Mac, use command. 
And so let's get started with Photoshop. I'm going to open up Bridge. Bridge is a companion application that comes with Photoshop. You can also get it for free. It's just a photo downloader and organizer. One more thing we need to do before we get started is calibrate the monitor and make sure the colors are correct. So I don't know how to do it on a Mac. <laughs> On Windows, you type in calibrate monitor, and this window comes up. You hit next, and then just follow the instructions. Now I'm in Bridge, it's a companion program. It comes for free with Photoshop for downloading your photos and organizing your photos. If you have your SD card in your computer, you can click this camera icon at the top and download your photos from an SD card. If you saw part one, You'll know that my SD card is blank because my Harvest Moon ri Rising Over the Bridge was a failure. So instead, I'm going to get a photo from the archives to develop in Photoshop. You can see that it's a raw file. This is the one I've selected because it says ARW, which is what Sony calls raw files. I think Canon calls them uh, CR2. And if you click it once, you can label it with stars or colors so that if you have hundreds of pictures, which you might have for star trails or time lapses, if you want to just develop one to make a single photo, you can label it so that you can find it later by hitting this filter button off to the left. But I don't want to do that. I just want to uh, open this one picture in Adobe Camera Raw, and you do that by double clicking it. You can do similar things in Lightroom that you can do in Bridge, but I'm going to use Bridge. So it's going to open up Adobe Camera Raw, and that's the exact same thing that Lightroom does as well. They both use Adobe Camera Raw. And now Adobe Camera Raw is open, and the first thing you want to do is go to the bottom in the center and click this button to set your preferences. Set it to, or I set it to Pro Photo RGB. 16 bits per channel and 300 pixels resolution and then hit OK and you never have to do that again. The first thing I want to do, we're going to be using these panels on the right hand side, is click the optics panel and I want to remove any chromatic aberration which would move, remove any halos from the stars. This is a very good lens so I don't think I have any but click that and next we want to um, correct any vignetting. So to do that, you click this Use Profile Corrections. I used a native Sony lens, a really good one, a 14 millimeter f1.8 G Master lens, uh, which is their top of the line lens, and it detected it because uh, Photoshop has a big database of lenses, but if you have a lens that it didn't detect or you connected your camera to your telescope, you'll have to get rid of any vignetting manually by moving these vignetting and distortion sliders. But it, used, it did it for me because it had it in there already, and so that's all we want to do with the optics panel. If you used your telescope, you'd click this manual button to get rid of any vignetting. So we're going to close the optics panel and the next thing we're going to do is go into detail and in detail we want to mm, the sharpening at 40 is okay but if you click this arrow to the right you have more options and one of them is noise reduction the default is zero and I want to use some noise reduction somewhere 30 to 50 and uh, you can move these uh, under sharpening. I'm going to increase the masking and then close that and color noise reduction at 25 is okay. Then we're going to close the detail panel. The next thing we're going to do is Go to the top where it says Profile, and instead of Adobe Color, I'm going to use Adobe Landscape. And you can see that made a big difference. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go into the Basic Panel. So click that 
arrow. And then you have a lot of options here that, that we can uh, experiment with. And there's no right or wrong. Uh, it's just uh, moving these sliders until the picture looks good. One thing you want to do with Milky Way shots, though, is the white balance is often off a little bit. So you can hit this drop down menu. You can use the white balance as shot, or you can go to the drop down menu and say custom. And then you click on the eyedropper and you find a neutral part of the sky and you click on it. And when you click on a neutral part of the sky, it will color correct the sky. You can also move these uh, temperature and tint sliders to uh, make the uh, white balance uh, to your liking. I think this looks pretty good. If you underexposed it, you can use this exposure button and you get a histogram at the top to keep an eye on. And you can even drag the histogram if you want to, or you can use the exposure, but I think this is pretty well exposed. Um, the ground isn't. And normally when you're taking a Milky Way shot with a, a nice foreground, you take two pictures one of the Milky Way that's short exposures or a number of them that you can stack in Photoshop. And then you take a number of pictures of the ground separately that are longer exposures, say four minutes, and you stack those and then you blend them. I didn't do this for this picture because I took this picture when I was on my camping trip this summer and I forgot my intervalometer. So I was limited to 30 seconds, so I, I didn't take a separate ground shot and you can see it's very dark, which is a shame, but after we finish in Adobe Camera Raw and go into Photoshop, I'm gonna see if I can lighten up the ground. But for Milky Way shots, take a separate picture of the ground and then blend them in Photoshop. I'm not gonna go over that in this tutorial, but that's how you do it. Um, could use some boosting in the contrast and the highlights and shadows a little bit. And you can give it some clarity. And you can also dehaze, but don't go overboard because if you do, it will make your picture appear tawdry. So just a little bit. And that helped a lot. This green is uh, called air glow and it's caused by the oxygen atoms being ionized by the sun during the day and then they turn green at night. Pretty nice. You can give it some vibrance and some saturation. You can also go to curves and use the curves, but I'm not going to do that. You can do it in Photoshop also. And you can also, if you have a color that you need to fix, let's say you want to increase the blues in your sky, you can isolate the colors in the color mixer, or what is called HSL, Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And I'm not going to do that. Another thing you can do in color mixer is if you have light pollution, which I don't because this was a Bortle 2, you can decrease the yellows to get rid of any light pollution. Sometimes that works, but I'm not going to do anything in Color Mixer. And I think that's all I want to do in Adobe Camera Raw. So now we're ready to open it in Photoshop. And you do that by clicking this open button at the bottom right. If you just click open, it'll just open in Photoshop as a normal object, but if you click open as object, it'll open as a smart object. And a smart object is one that you can make changes to that are non-destructive. At any time, you can get rid of them. You can go back. You can start over. You can try to process the picture again. And so you can tell it's a smart object because of this white box in the picture, which is over here on the right-hand side. So now, I... Uh, 
I need to lighten the ground because it's too dark. So before I do that though, we want to put some filters in by clicking the filter button at the top. It has a lot of filters. The two I'm going to put in are a little more noise reduction by going to noise, reduce noise on top of the one that we did previously. You can adjust these if you want to, or you can just accept the defaults and say OK. And then I'm going to go back to filter and I'm going to also use the sharpen smart sharpen. And I'll just accept the default here. And then now I want to lighten up the ground, which is way too dark. So to do that, we're going to choose this tool over here. On the, on the left hand side is the toolbox. And I'm going to choose quick selection tool. And once you click on quick selection tool, you can change these choices at the top, uh, the size of the brush, for example, by clicking this. You can move this slider to make it bigger or smaller. I want it smaller because I'm going to brush across the ground. You can also use your left and right bracket keys to change the size of the brush. And once you're happy with the size of it, I'm going to just brush across the ground like that. And voila, Photoshop chose the whole ground and it's indicated by this white dotted line. After you've selected what you want to uh, isolate, then you hit this button at the top, select and mask, and the red shows that that part is not going to be affected. And if you don't like that view, you can go over here in properties on the right hand side and change it, but I I'm just going to leave it with the default. You can feather it and smooth it a little bit. But since this is a crash course, I'm just going to leave it like that and then hit OK. And now, whatever adjustments I make is only going to affect the ground. So these are all our adjustment layers right here. And the first one is brightness and contrast. And if I click on that, I can brighten the ground without changing the sky. Pretty neat, huh? Shame I didn't have my intervalometer, but that looks pretty good. That looks way better than it did. Um, you can make other adjustments. You can add levels, curves. You can change the exposure. You can use a gradient if you only want part of the sky to be brightened. Um, you can change the color balance, the hue and saturation. But I'm pretty happy with this picture. It looks much better than how it looked out of the camera. And since I don't have two pictures, I can't show you how to blend. Maybe I'll make another video about that later. And you can also remove things if you had satellites, which I had some small ones. They're pretty insignificant. Actually, they might be meteors. And also, this is Saturn and this is Jupiter rising. So that looks pretty good. I think I'll just leave it like that. And by the way, if you didn't like any of your changes, you can click on them and you can see what it did uh, by clicking these off and on. That made a huge difference. Uh, and once you're happy with your picture, you can crop it if you want to with the crop tool. I'm going to leave it like this. Now we're ready to save it, and you do that by going to File, Export, Export As, and if you want to share it with people, you would make it into a JPEG, and I always go to the highest quality if it's a good picture, and then you hit Export, and then you save it wherever you want to save it. Bridge does not save pictures, so you should put your raw files in a separate folder if you want to uh, try to process them differently later. And that is how you process a skyscape.